Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today I'm doing a tank review, a silly tank review, on the M103. I don't know yet what's silly about it, but don't expect it to be extremely serious. I think that's, that's the silly part. Not serious. Yeah. Now why am I doing a tank review on the M103? Well, for one, it is tank of the month? Wow, that's not how it's called at all. It's top of the tree at the moment, and I just finished my grind to the T125 for it. Uh, I had some really okay games in it, you know, good games is 7, 8k damage, whatever. But I had 5k, 6k games, so I decided, hey, I'm going to do a tank review on it, and this is it. So without further ado, I think it's time for me to head back into the garage and see what makes the M103 work, and what doesn't work, and why it doesn't work, and why I think it should work, but it quite clearly doesn't, because it is a tank. I didn't make any sense there, but just let's get into the garage. Get away. Welcome into my garage. Let's have a look at... Is this... Wait. Mm, hold on. Ah, there it is. Let's have a look at the M103. The M103 is a tier 9 American heavy tank. But it isn't really a heavy tank. Now, before you all get your panties in a twist, I know I said this about the IS-8 as well, but the M103 doesn't really play like a heavy tank. It can play like a heavy tank in a tier 9 game, but not really in a tier 10 game, and I'll show you why. First of all, if we have a look at its armor, it would say the whole armor is 203mm at the front, 44 at the side and rear. And the turret is 254 at the front, 99 at the side, 53 at the rear. Which means you have to keep your front pointed towards the enemy at all times. And you, as you can see, the turret is not small. It has a huge side silhouette. So anything that gets your side will pen. Now the front, as I said, 203 and 254 millimeters. Don't believe the numbers. Because I will show you later in uh, Tanks GG or Tank Inspector or whatever the thing is I use nowadays and everyone else. Looks can be deceiving. When you get this tank stock, it will be absolutely atrocious. The stock gun is the same gun you get on the, the T29 and eventually the T32. 198 pen at tier 10 you have a bigger chance of probably let's have a look finding a cherry upside down on top of the church in lakeville then penning any tier 10 heavy tank from the front but when you do finally unlock the second gun for 25,000 experience you finally have a gun that is actually effective against tier 10 enemies and that is because you get 242 millimeters of penetration and not a stinky old 298 However, it is not uncommon for some people to just try and skip the last gun, the 120mm gun M58, because you only get 16 more millimeters of penetration, and it is 60-something thousand experience. I, I should know this, but ha, I can't be bothered finding it out right now. I am a weak person, I did find it out. It, it is actually 60,000 flat. But the good part about the gun M58 is, it is more accurate and it aims faster. And with more penetration, you know, you have a bigger chance of actually penning your enemies. So, uh, I went for it, and it, it's a really good gun, and you take it with you to the T125. Even though the T125 already has it unlocked, so technically you unlock it when you unlock the T125, and then you have it on the M103. I, I don't know what else to say about the guns, except for, go for the best gun, it's good, yeah. And now we're going to look at some general stats. Now, in a tank review, people expect, you know, to be force-fed everything. Well, force-fed, is that even the correct word? Uh, fed bite-sized pieces of information about the tank, such as the power-to-weight ratio. And if I'm truly honest, I have no clue how that works. The tank goes forwards. Good enough. But, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a look. I'm gonna try. Hit points, 1850. You know, it's a good bit of health. You can take a few shots if you're not facing two E100s and something else that is big. 390 meter view range. It can be upped a bit if you have a good crew, but it's an arms, possibly binos if you are really weird and put those on heavy tanks. We talk about the armor in a minute. Uh, average damage is only with the second and third gun, it's 400. If you have the first gun, it's 320, I believe? 320 something else. Yeah, the penetration. Reload time can be faster if you put in a rammer and vents. I'm going to talk about that in a second as well, very quickly, because <laughs> I'm not here to do serious tank reviews. They're called silly for a reason. Gun dispersion is 
at 100 meters, you know, don't forget that, at 100 meters, 0.37. Now that is quite interesting, because it doesn't really talk about dispersion on the move or anything, and that's something Wargaming always wanted to keep a secret. So I'm not going to go deeper into that, because that means I have to dig into all sorts of websites. Uh, no. Now the elevation and the depression are quite interesting, because minus 8 is, you know, it's good. It's good for a heavy tank, and you can actually use that. And I'm going to talk about it in, you know, the armor part, where it can also have a downside. And, and that's more the fault of the turret size than anything else. Then there is the turret reverse, which is 32 degrees a second, which is not bad. And the traverse speed of the tracks is 28, so if you combine those two, you have 36... Did I actually say 36? 60 degrees a second traverse speed, which is, you know, which is pretty good for a heavy tank. If someone is circling you, he will have a rough time trying to keep your gun from pointing at him. And then there's the horsepower per ton ratio and the top speed, and those kind of, you know, speak for themselves. The top speed, 34 kilometers an hour, you go forwards at not the greatest speed, but you do go forwards, hopefully in time to get a good shot off. And I think we're done with this part of the review. Jackpot! We're getting close to the end, guys, trust me. So, we have actually arrived at the part of the armor of the M103. So let's have a look at that. Here we can see the M103 as it should be visible in-game. And but we're going to look at the collision model because that's actually the part that, you know, is supposed to um, protect you from the enemies. Now, if we look at the side, you can see the whole side, th the front is 200 millimeters, but you're not going to aim at the front, you're going to aim at the middle part, which is about 100 millimeters or thinner from the back. And the hole is not much better, it's basically automatic pen. For the back, you have a chance to pen it with high explosive if you don't aim too high, because that part is for some reason thicker. I guess that's because the engine deck is there, whatever. Back of the turret, don't fire high explosive into that, it will just pen with normal AP. From above, you can see it is a massive target for artillery. This deliciously big green part, artillery will have no problem pooping massive shells on top of that. Now at the front, did I mention at the beginning of the tank review how the front, you know, looks can be deceiving or don't believe what you see? Well, the 203mm is just the beak of it. The upper plate is very well angled, but only 106 to 162 millimeters. Effective, you know, 215, 214. Don't expect to be penned there. However, people will try and aim for the lower plate, which is from the sides 170 to the front 180. About 200 at the bottom and 180 at top. So if you get this hole down, that is where the next problem starts. I did mention it has 254 millimeters of armor, but that's only behind the mantlet. If you aim slightly beside that, you will quickly see that there is a small part where it is only, if I look from the front, only 216, 220 millimeters of armor. And that's where the M103 doesn't really shine. If you try and use that, you know, gun depression, let's say it's about this, it is still 220, 221 millimeters. And that is where the M103 has its problems. Tier 10 guns will just aim at that part, you know, if RNG doesn't really intervene, and just pen that every single time of the day during a match. Turret ring is not that great, 134, but, you know, RNG can save you and hopefully bounce shots from here or here. And then there's the next problem, the cupola. The cupola is, you know, it's rounded, but it's still 109mm, and a cupola is often a weaker target or spot on enemy tanks, so expect, you know, people to know where to shoot. But the M103 has got another problem, this angled frontal part here just above the mantlet. Even when angled, it is only 190mm, now that's pretty good but not for tier 9 and 10 guns. If you look at it straight forward, it's 182 millimeters. And that is the worst part about this tank. If people aim at you, and they try to aim for the cupola, but the shot dips a bit, it still pens right above the mantlet. And that's where the M103 has its problems. If you try to side scrape it, first of all, you have to hide at a big part of your turret. But if that, you know, if that succeeds, you can try and turn your turret a bit like this, when, you know, side-scraping along a corner. If this part is, you know, 
What am I doing? If you can hide, maybe hide that part, I would even maybe angle like this. So they see your gun, this part is really well angled, and they will not see this part because that's behind a building. People will have not that big of a trouble panning your side if it is well angled. You can very quickly over angle this tank. And you have to be careful with that because the tracks won't eat everything. But if you know how to angle it and people miss your lower plate and you're not hold down, they will have trouble panning this area here. Because if they aim too high, they will hit where the hull meets the tracks and it will quickly bounce or just track. The tracks eat a lot if you aim for this area. If you aim past here, it will most likely bounce unless you over angle. Now, if you have the stock turret, as many people will have with, you know, if they just unlock the tank, this part is even weaker. Now, it doesn't look like it, but I found in the stock turret that the cheeks are a massive weak spot and, you know, tier 9 and 10 guns will have no trouble penning that whatsoever. And that is a huge frustration in the M103 for me. Its armor doesn't live up to its expectations. And when I do say it doesn't live up to its expectations, I do mean it doesn't live up to it. It is about as temperamental as a pregnant woman. One time, it can work magnificently and you will bounce Jaegerus and Foshes. And the next time, here, an IS-2 just pan me right to the top of the turret. You can see the smudge on top of it. And here I try to... Or that's even a bit later. I shoot this T28 prototype because I can. Heck, <laughs> I'm trying. This IS-2 shows up again. I try to angle, but he just pans me in the turret ring. Now, that is a bit of an RNG shot, but it does happen. You won't be able to stop it if it's one of those games where the M103 armor just doesn't want to work. It is one of those games where the M103 armor doesn't want to work. Now, I paused here, I think. No, I didn't pause. I just tried to look here for the penetrating shot and it's in the turret ring right over there, beneath my gun mantlet. So I decide to tuck my lower plate in and have a punt at this Yak Tiger. And he does actually bounce off my cupola or not cupola turret or anything like that. But now I'm 1 versus 3 and I do try to keep my front armor to the enemy. But this Yak Tiger, even though he's firing AP with 203mm of penetration, has no problem with my lower plate at all. And he does ammo rack me. And he just keeps putting shots into it. And he will keep doing that. I do have a lucky bounce on both of them. But I try to tuck myself into the Yak Tiger. And try to sort of angle for the IS-2. But he just pens me, no problem. And the Yak Tiger sort of puts a shot somewhere into my tank. And finishes me off. And that's what the M103 does. It just doesn't want to listen, and then the next time, it will bounce shots from the gods. And that's the M103. It is temperamental. It is bipolar. It is everything you don't want in a tank. So I'm going to talk about equipment now. And equipment, you know, it's fairly easy on a heavy tank. It's most likely a rammer, because you need to have a faster reload. Any faster reload is good, because most heavy tanks have a quite slow reload. And then I went myself for vents because I wanted everything a bit better, you know, better is always good. And then for a while I ran a toolbox because I didn't have enough credits for the verge tab. But I did put the verge tab in it when I gained enough credits. And that's all you can really take on a heavy tank in my opinion on the M103. Maybe you can switch out the verge tab for the toolbox if you feel that your repair time is not good enough. Or if you're really weird binoculars because you wanted the extra view range which is not bad but you already have about 400 to 410 meters if you have a good crew and that's it really for the whole review part of the tank it was not informative at all because you don't come to this channel to be informed you come to this channel to be entertained i hope if you come here to be informed oh my god i have mercy with your soul but the m103 it is an american tank and all the American tanks don't really excel at anything. They are the jack of all trades, master of none. And the M103 is exactly that. It doesn't have the armor. The E75, the VKB, and the Type 4 Heavy have the armor. It doesn't have the speed because the WZ111114 and IS-8, future T10, if you're watching this in the future, have that. It doesn't have anything like that. It doesn't have high alpha. It doesn't have an autoloader. 
And the same as the Conqueror, the Conqueror is also not that special. But for some reason the tank still works, the M103, the Conqueror. They're not great tanks, they're not bad tanks, they're good tanks. They are reliable tanks. Oh yeah, I did absolutely hate it in the beginning because in the beginning it was just really bad. And its size doesn't really help that much as well. You really need to have a good matchup to have a good game in this tank, I feel. And if you don't have a good matchup, be prepared to be the support tank. And that's all this tank is. A support heavy. You know, I think I've mumbled and jumbled enough about this tank. Let's get into some um, replays I had in this tank. And you will see that it's a good matchup. I do good. Yeah, good. So here we are with the first game of this tank review. I've got two games for you. And this is the first one. And they're, oh, you know, they're both an M103 because otherwise it would be not really that logical to have maybe an AMX-30 tank game in an M103. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I've got a godlike matchup here with him on my team. It's me and a T-5041, the only tier 9s. And on the enemy team, they've got a Fosh and an AMX-30. The half of the team is tier 8 and the rest is tier 7 with a lone tier 6 light tank. So at the beginning of the game, I usually kind of have a look at what the enemy has and I see that they've got quite a lot of TDs. Which means you don't really want to go into the most open spots on their side of the hill. They've got an artillery and, and you know artillery is going to aim for me because I'm the top tier heavy. And according to XVM, I am, you know, except for the MT25, the best player on our team. So expect to be focused. I see they've got a few tanks driving up there to the hill and I, and I finally decide to move my turret. I do that. I decide to drive. Okay, I bounced. Not bad. I decide to drive to the beginning without moving my turret really because I'm not really touching my mouse or anything. That AMX 1375 apparently didn't want to play this game and then decided to just YOLO in and die. But he did get a miracle bounce off of me, so... <laughs> AMX 13 armor, it's amazing. I'm here very much open for artillery. And as M4 said in his very first video, only two things are certain in life, death and taxes. And I've had enough of paying my artillery taxes the game already, so I decided to go to the other flank and help this T-54 lightweight with this Tiger 1. Now I'm pretty sure this Tiger 1 has some help behind him. I expect some TDs behind him. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to really annoy the, the, the poop out of this Tiger 1. Track him in position. You know, he's trying to side scrape. He's trying to angle his armor. Against an M103, you know, you have to aim where you fire. And he has to aim for my either lower plate or the inside part of my tracks, which he can't hit. And then he turns his turret away and he's a kill for me. We have invested quite a lot of people on this flank. We've got almost every single half. We've got a low in the dip below us. Just going YOLO. I don't know how he's still alive. Usually TDs would absolutely poop on him. And then there's this Oni. Now, the Oni is angling very well, but with 200 and something, 58 millimeters of penetration, I have no trouble with that little machine turret there. Machine gun turret. So, after, you know, bothering him quite a bit with my uh, fairly accurate gun, I decided to move up a bit and get face to face with this Oni. See if I can get a shot off, I can't. We have pushed through over the hills and almost into their base. The lower finally died, not to even a TD, but to the AMX-30 that's running away there. Maybe we can help this T-54 lightweight kill the AMX-30. I only track him with my shot and then I try to shield off the AMX-30 from shooting this lightweight. But the lightweight doesn't really understand what I'm doing and he decides to drive out of my cover and then he gets killed. Could have done a bit better there, Mr. T-54 lightweight, if I'm fully honest. He was a one-shot, but I think he just wanted to get the damage in. And then, I said earlier, you know, in this replay, that the gun is quite accurate. But it's also quite temperamental. I had that shot on the CDC, wasn't that fully aimed. So I take a shot on this T-20. Oh, T-21 is it? T-21. And it misses. But, you know, third time's the charm. Let's take our time to aim, fire, and I kill him. 
after about 9 second reload, I don't have enough time to kill this CDC because he dies instantly. So I decided to move up, but I don't know why I took the low road. I knew there was a D28 prototype up there, and I was hoping maybe I can bounce a shot. No, I can't, because I've got a massive turret roof, and he will pen that every single time of the day. So I get behind cover from the T28 prototype, and I want to get below the gun lines of the Fosh and the T28 prototype above me. See if I can shoot the Comet. No, I can't. Comet is dead anyway. And here... I make some misplays. I've got quite a bit of health left. Not that much. And I... I know I can pen the front of the T28. But if I hit the angled parts, you know, I will have trouble. I know he's reloaded. I try to put him a shot in anyway. And he pens my lower plate at such a ridiculous angle. I fully expected him to miss or bounce. And I need to learn more about the T28 prototype. Because his reload is so fast that I sort of panic there almost and go back before I can get a good shot off but I see he's not focusing on something else I aim you know auto aim is for winners poke around the corner put a shot in he misses his shot I have enough time to casually aim and kill him I see that the Fosh is busy with the IS-6 and you know behind quite some hills so I move up to the Borsig and my shot after this will be high explosive because the uh, a Borsig doesn't have armor. I can take the shot from him, but I still try to angle. And he does bounce. He hits the wrong side of my turret. I think he was just panicking and getting a quick shot in. Fire him high explosive. 500 and almost 50 damage done. Must have killed at least his gunner, if not his gun as well. And then the fuck came around. I should have kept driving forwards here. But I'm so lucky because the Fosh misses his next shot. And I put a miracle shot into his something. I have no clue how or what. Oh, it's right below his gun. Oh, that's quite good. And the next shot, you know, the, the accuracy, again, it's temperamental. I can miss shots like this easily, but I hit the few range finder of this tank with no problem whatsoever. And this Fosh knows, if I poke out, I am dead. But I want to get that top gun. But I don't want to die. So I let the MT-25 take some shots, the Fosh has had enough, he pulls back, and I decide to close the distance. Not to only maximize my chance of actually hitting his weak spot, but also to make him die because of the tanks behind me. Ah, oh, my top gun. Boo, Mr. IS-3, boo. It is time to roll out indeed for the next game in this tank review. Again, I've got a really good matchup before me. And as I said, I, I feel this tank only excels in a good matchup. I've got an IS-8, me myself, and Nuclear Waffle in his T-55A on my team. An enemy team has an E-75, a good type for a heavy player, and a Type 61 in their top tier tanks. A large part of this rest of the team is tier 8, and there's a few tier 7s for us to deal with as well. And again, a tier 6 light tank on each team. So me, in an M103, you know, a tier 9 top tier heavy on a city map, means I have to take a very aggressive position and play very aggressive to hopefully have a good impact on this match. Nuclear Waffle in his T-55A rushes forward to get in a very aggressive position, hoping to get some sneaky shots off into some tanks that don't really expect him there yet. Now the rest of our team is kind of indecisive if they want to join us up here, right in the front lines. Because, well, they don't know what has been spotted yet, and I can't really blame them. I'm kind of indecisive here as well. Do I want to go forward or not? And I'm happy I didn't, because that is a lot of scary enemy tanks, including the Type 4 Heavy. Now, I decide to kind of ignore the Type 4 Heavy and go for the easy kills first. I want to get as many guns out of this game as possible and just ignore the Type 4 Heavy while I can. I want to keep him busy but not at the expense of my team. 
Now I want to help Waffle here as well by shooting the IS-3, but that rubble is very sneaky. And again, I tried to shoot through the wall and there's rubble in the way. So Nuclear Waffle is going to have a tough time trying to fight this IS-3 by himself. Now this WZ here has taken a far too aggressive position. He completely forgot I was there and I can put a free shot into him. Meanwhile, Waffle is having some trouble with this IS-3 and he will for the rest of this match. And I have some trouble with this Type 4 Heavy. I know its weak spot is the cheeks, but the way he's angled, he is hiding his, for him, left cheek behind a wall and his right cheek is so well angled that I cannot pen it. So that's how you play your Type 4 Heavy. You hide your weak spots and angle the other one. Now this T28, you know, he's in a very open position and he, I don't know if he knew what he was doing or if he just wanted to get out of this match. I don't know. He was in an open position and I got him killed. And you see how this Type 4 was angled. He pens my turret roof, no problem. But that's how you angle your Type 4 heavy. Right before I reload, he does it again. I want to get a shot off, but it bounces. I, I don't know what to say. It's just good play by this Type 4 Heavy. He knows how to play this tank. Now, without artillery, it's very difficult to dig them out if you don't flank them. I see an ISU, you know, with the derp gun. Always fun to see those. Especially when you can pen them in the front and they don't shoot back. I love that. ISU is still there. I, it's a difficult shot for me, you know. This gun is still temperamental, but I hit it. A Waffle is still battling this IS-3. And he's trading with it, which is not that good. I can't cross yet. I should be crossing now to help Waffle. But I elect to shoot this Type 4 instead. This was bad play by me. I should have gone in and helped Waffle with this IS-3 earlier. Instead, I do it now and scream on Team Sig, I shall take revenge! As I come around the corner. I bully myself right into his face. Wiggle my turret so, he, you know, I hope he can bounce off my cupola. Put a shot into his turret roof. The IS-3 turret roof is very weak, just like the M103. So he has no clue what to do. I think he just gave up at this point. And I kill him. And he uh, he's not happy with that. He calls me a retard noob or something. Yeah, there it is. Because I bullied myself into his face. Now I looked at the map here and I saw we lost the beach. That stuff happens. It's... It's not uncommon for it to happen in this match. But I expected the FCM 50D to go to our cap. So I like to go to our cap. But then I see he's flanking around, which is a good play by the FCM 50D. But I apparently outthought him, and now I've got a side, and he does not expect me here. Auto aim is still for winners. Get a good side shot off. Now he does pen me in the lower plate, as expected. And with 400 alpha damage, I fully expect to kill him. I don't. I don't kill him. That was a low roll I could not have used there. But the FCM 50T decides to not aim for me. Shoot someone else. And I can kill him. I've got four kills now. And there's two tanks left. It is six against two. Boy, what would happen now, guys? There's a bit of a, a dull moment in the game now. And I don't know what to talk... Oh, I know what I'm going to talk about. While at Tankfest, I saw one of the M... I saw an M103. I saw it in real life. I'll put a picture of it on screen now. And it was such a big tank. Its turret is absolutely huge. I, I didn't expect to see an M103 at Tankfest. And I was pleasantly surprised. But by God, is that a big tank. No clue why the Americans decided to make such a big turret. But it was kind of cool to see one. And most likely I will go to Tankfest again next year. In 2016. Again with QB, Peppy, hopefully M4 and Ike as well. Maybe some other people. We'll see. But expect me to be there. If, if everything goes according to plan. So I was a kind of hesitating there. Because I didn't want to get shot by the IS-6. I, I see that my team is still kind of figuring out how to play this. We've lost two tanks in the meanwhile. Both that... 1390 but I've got his back now and he has to push out or something else and he does and our Tiger 1 should be able to kill him but the 1390 is reloaded and he kills our Tiger 1 3 against 2 now I make a massive misplay here I thought he was aiming the other way and he ammo racks me I do decide to put his shot into his side but I was ammo racked which means my reload time wasn't as great I decide to not over angle it here 
And I want to get this kill. I am very lucky he hit the wall there because he was aiming for my lower plate and he would have pinned my lower plate. And the 112 finishes off this match. And that was the end of this tank review. And that was one of my last games in the M103 as well. And you know what comes after the M103, right guys? Yeah, I think you guys do.